Arrow function is one of the feature introduced in EX6 version of JavaScript. It allows you to create function in a cleaner way compared to regular functions. Hello everyone, I'm Nisha Singla. Welcome back to my channel and I'm back with one more cool feature of EX6 and that is fat arrow function. In our last video, we have learned about template literals. You can check this video. Link is in the description below. And if you're new to my channel and wants to know more about EX6, then subscribe the channel now. So fat arrow function is a new syntax to write a code in JavaScript. Earlier, we used to write simple function but now there are more cleaner way to write the function. So there are some advantages associated with that and definitely there are some disadvantages as well. So we are going to discuss both where to use arrow function and where we should not use. So stay connected and watch the video till the end. So now let's dive into the code. So let's create a simple function in EX5 and then see how the same function will be in EX6. So suppose I have a simple function and I'm giving it a maybe uh, add and if you want to sum to number then we can do simply x y and return x plus y and now we need to invoke the function so here we can say add and I'm passing two values so here we get the output right so now the first point that why we use arrow function is that because it gives us a shorter syntax so now let's convert the same function into an arrow function so for that now I will create one variable sum and to use fat arrow function this is the syntax parenthesis and this arrow. So here the parenthesis will represent my function parameter. If your function accept any parameter it will goes here and after this arrow this body will start. So I want to sum two number so we need to take input of two number so here we can say x and y. Now we need to return this sum so to return anything from arrow function instead of this three line you can simply say x plus y and now we can log that and call this function with two parameters so here we can say 10 plus 2 12 so now you can see whatever we have written here with three line of code and here the same we have converted to a single line so this syntax is called arrow function in ex6 interesting right so definitely you will love this feature if you understand it correctly so first thing you need to remember that arrow function comes with default return statement. If you have a single line as a function body, then you don't need to mention return keyword explicitly. By default return is there. Second, if you have like arrow function with no arguments, suppose you don't have any argument. So I'll copy this function and put it here. If your function is not taking any argument, then you can simply do like this and maybe I'm passing some value like this now and if your function take single argument then you can also do like this so 10 plus 3 30 and it should also work as I told you if you have only single line then default return statement is there you don't need to put any return keyword but if function contains more than one line as a function body then in that case you need to wrap your statement into curly braces so there you need to use return statement like for an example if I say I have two variable x and y now suppose if i have multiple line to execute in this function then i have to wrap my statement into curly braces so this time this will not work okay we have to use return statement if you are putting curly braces so this is all about the basic syntax uh, of arrow functions there are few piece of advanced syntax that are very useful to know so for an example, as of now, we have just written this expression from arrow function, but maybe I have a requirement to return a object from a fat arrow function. So maybe you will think that this should work. So first thing you need to remember when you have an arrow function and you want to return an object from that arrow function. So in that case, it will not treat like a object. For JavaScript, it will behave like a function because it has a curly braces. So it will think like it is a block of my function, like we have this block. So to indicate that instead you want a single expression that happens to be object, you need to wrap the object with parentheses. So now my JavaScript will understand that this is an expression, I'm returning it as a whole as an object. So now if you do console.log and do get user, so it should work. Now let's talk about the another advantage of using arrow function is the use of this. 
who have worked with JavaScript earlier, we all know that handling this is one of the difficult task in JavaScript because this is always referred to the current object, right? So whenever the context of my function or the context of the data change, the value of this will also change. So now let's see how fad arrow function will help you to get rid from all those issues that we had earlier. So for that I'm simply creating one function. So I'm binding one property here, giving it a name of product name. Now I want to return this product so I will create one function. So I can say this dot get product and I'm creating a simple function like this. And maybe inside this function I'm doing some Ajax call so or maybe this function is doing some calculation so it may take some time. So what I'm doing I'm calling one more function inside this. This is uh, set timeout which will execute my statement after a certain interval. So I am creating one callback function here and it will execute after this milliseconds. And inside this set timeout, I am doing console.log and try to return my product. So now we can see in this function we have bind the property using this. So we need to create an object here. Let object equals to new add to cart. And now this obj can call the methods and property of this function. So product name get product. So I will make a call to this function. Save the changes and you can see here I am getting undefined from line 37. Let's comment this one as well. Okay. So here is the problem. Let's understand it how this is working. So now when we are talking about this add to card, I am binding two properties to this function. One is the product name and second is the get product. And when we come inside this function, get set timeout, I have one more function and here I am trying to access this dot product name. So, so let's do one more console.log here so that we can understand how this is working. So you can see at line 35, the value of this is pointing to add to cart. And if I do console.log inside this method and see the value of this, you can say it is giving me window. So now what is happening, this function is pointing to this get product and this is a object of add to cart. So here the value of this is fine. But when we talk about this function, it's just a normal function. And we all know that in JavaScript default object is window, right? So here this normal function is pointing to global object. So at that time in this block, the scope of this is not add to cart. The scope of the object is window object. So we are not able to get the reference of this as add to cart. So that's why I'm not able to access the object property product name. So now to solve this issue in EX5, what we used to do, we used to hold the reference of a variable, this into another variable, maybe that. So now to access that, you can see now from line 838, I am able to access add to cart reference with the help of that variable. So now I need to use that instead of this inside this function. So this time it should work and I'm getting the output. So this was the problem with handling this in EX5 and it is a very small example when your object is very nested or complex it's very difficult to handle the context of this. So here the arrow function will be helpful. Arrow function doesn't have its own this. So whenever you call this it refer to its parent scope only. So now what you need to do you need to convert this function from a normal function to arrow function so in that case, it will not create a new scope. It will take the value of this from its parent and the parent is add to cart. So to convert this function to arrow function, what you need to do, you just need to convert it to parenthesis like this and this. Now we can get it from line 36 because we don't need any reference holder here. And now we can access this inside this callback as well. Interesting, right? So this is very powerful concept of arrow function which is very important to understand that whenever you want that your scope of this should not change, it should always point to its parent and there the arrow function is quite useful. Now there is one more point with arrow function is that argument binding is not there. When we use regular function we have argument binding but with arrow function there is no arguments property available. Let's see it with example. Suppose I'm just creating a simple regular function and trying to call this function. 
but maybe my requirement is that every time when I will make a call to this function, the list of parameters are different. Maybe for the first function, I have two parameters to pass, but for the other, maybe I have more than two or three. So in that case, I cannot say a comma b or a comma b comma c because list of my parameters are not fixed. So in regular function, we hold all the parameters in one property that is called arguments. So here we can see that arguments will create an array for all the parameters that I have passed. So if the same thing I want to do with arrow function, then this code will not work. Let's test this. If I convert this one to a fat arrow function, then you will see the arguments property is not defined. So to solve this issue in ex6, you can use the rest operator. What exactly these operators are, how it works, we are going to discuss in the upcoming videos. But for now, arguments property will not work with arrow function. One more point you need to take care of that arrow function cannot be used everywhere. So where we should use it, where we should not use, let's talk on that. Arrow functions are very powerful whenever you want to do some kind of iteration or you want to perform some logic on over again and again on some items. Let's take a very small example. Suppose I have a list of users in form of array. I'm giving some name here. Now if I want to iterate over each element of the array and then I may want to convert it to uppercase or lowercase, I want to perform a basic operation. So in that case, instead of writing it with a traditional approach, we can make the code little smaller and concise. Let's see how arrow function can be useful over there. So what we can do, we need to iterate. So we can use map function here. So we can say names.map. And now we can see that map function will take one callback which helps us to handle each value of the array. So instead of defining it as a normal function, we can make it a arrow function. So what we can do, it will give me one property name and here I have my arrow function. So I want to iterate for each name and want to return the value in uppercase. So we can say to uppercase and where we can do result. So here we can see the syntax is very small and more readable. So similar approach will go if you have some object and you want to iterate over the object, you can use it there as well. One of the ideal place where arrow functions can be used is in the promises and callback. In one of my video, I have explained how promises work and whenever promise returns either success or failure response, we can handle that response with the help of arrow functions. Now there are number of places where they will not help you but may cause some issues for your code. So the first is in the method on an object. So if you have an object and that object contains a method, so in that case that method will not work if you will use the arrow function instead of regular function. Because there the arrow function don't have its own this. So in that case your object property will not bind to that object. Let's understand it with the example. Suppose we have one object and this object has one property and I'm creating one function here, but this function I'm creating as an arrow function. And here I'm trying to return the name of the user. So I will use backtick syntax. So this is the template literal syntax. I have discussed about it in my last video. So if you didn't cover it, I will provide the link in the description. You can take a look. Now let's call this function. So we can say user.getUser. When you save the changes and see, username is blank. It means it is not working. Let's do console.log this and see what is the value of this. So here we can see the value of this is window. As I told you, arrow function don't have its own this. So in that case, it will take the value of this from its outer scope and which is the window. So here, arrow function will not help you in your code. So you need to use a simple regular function here instead. So once I will convert this code to regular function, it will work. And here the value of this is my object. And the same rule goes with the class properties. If you will define the functions of your class with the arrow function there also, you will get the same problem. So we don't recommend to use it there. So I hope you understood where to use arrow functions and where not to use. So I hope this session will help you to write more manageable code with arrow function. I will see you in my next video. Till then, take care. Bye-bye and stay safe.